It's Saturday, December 18th, 2010, and you're watching This Week in Linux News. If you recall, last week we talked about the Google CR48 notebook that Google was planning to be shipping out as a part of their pilot program. If you haven't paid attention, I put out a video earlier this week. I received one of them, I've unboxed it, and I've been using it. I'm actually currently using it to hold all these show notes. So if you'd like to see that video, I'll have an annotation and a link in the source code below where you can go check that out. But moving right along, the big news this week was a lot of gaming-related news. Earlier this year, we talked about a project going on called the Humble Indie Bundle. Well, the company behind it decided to go ahead and create the Humble Indie Bundle Part 2. This comes with five different games, including Braid, Cortex Command, Machinarium, or Machinarium, not sure how to pronounce that, Osmos, and Revenge of the Titans. And with every purchase of the bundle, a portion of your purchase goes to the Electronic Frontier Foundation and to Child's Play Charity. So by buying this bundle, you're getting a bunch of games, you're giving to charity, everybody wins. And speaking of games, this week Alien Arena 2011 released. This comes with Ragdoll Physics using the Open Dynamics Physics Engine, a revamped in-game IRC client, true type font support, two brand new maps, and new music by renowned musician Paul Joyce, as well as a bunch of bug fixes, tweaks, and more. If you'd like to try out the game, you can feel free to go to their website and download it. I'll have a link to that in the source code below. And to wrap up the games, we always do tend to talk about the Open Connect project. A member of the research staff at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Laboratory has created a Minority Report style interface, using only the Connect 3D sensor and a bunch of open source technologies. To be honest, this is exactly what I expected to come out of the Open Connect project, so it's awesome that somebody has finally done it. I'll have a link to the video where you can check that out in the source code below. Moving right along, I don't know if you're a Dropbox user or not, I have been for a very long time. This week, Dropbox version 1.0 finally released. With this comes some new performance enhancements. It's said to reduce the memory usage by up to 50%. They've added selective sync, so you can select what folders you want to sync. If you have a small hard drive, you don't want to have everything syncing. If you've got a really slow network connection, you don't want to bring everything down. This is a great way to only get what you want on your specific computer. And of course, if you aren't signed up for Dropbox, Dropbox is a service where you can have online storage for all of your files and have it sync seamlessly across all of your computers and even your mobile devices at this point because there are Android and iPhone applications available. If you haven't signed up for it already, I will of course have a link to it in the source code below. It is my referral link, so if you sign up under it, I get a little space extra, you get a little space extra, everybody wins! Keeping things moving right along, it turns out that GNOME Shell may not be available in Ubuntu 11.04. A bug on Launchpad points out that there are some changes that have been made to Natty Narwhal that have broken GNOME Shell to a point where it should not be able to work by the time 11.04 comes out, so they're actually going to blacklist it. There haven't been any official announcements from Canonical, from Mark Shuttleworth, or anything like that, so we'll just have to wait and see what happens, but for the time being, the best bet is that there will be a PPA coming out after 11.04 releases that will make it work. And keeping things rolling, a lot of people complain day by day that Adobe's software is not available on Linux or the software that is available on Linux doesn't work terribly well. Well, from a story on OMG Ubuntu, an Adobe employee has said that if you want to see these things happen, if you want to see their software come to Linux, you need to go to their website and request those features. You need to request that whatever you want be ported over to Linux. However, after the story was posted, they were just flooded with requests, so now they're asking if you do want to see things ported to Linux, go to their Git Satisfaction page and say, I like this idea on whichever ideas you like. I do have to say, it would be really cool to see some of the Adobe software ported natively. It would be wonderful to have a copy of After Effects that works in Linux. Of course I say that, I've never used After Effects before, and I've only briefly used Adobe Premiere at work, but still it would be nice to have better and other alternatives available. And speaking of some of Adobe software that may not work terribly well on Linux, LightSpark version 0.4.5, an alternative Flash player for Linux, is now available. Now it's not up to 100% flash functionality, but it does add in play and pause functionality on YouTube, and it adds PowerPC support, which is something that Adobe Flash has not done. I haven't had a chance to try it out yet, but if you have, leave a comment down below and let me know how it works. And let's wrap things up with some Android news. As we mentioned before, Android 2.3 Gingerbread released last week. Well, the source code is now officially available online. On a post on Google Groups, John Batiste Queru says that the Nexus S went on sale yesterday morning running Gingerbread. Just like I did for Froyo, I'm open sourcing the matching Android platform source code right after the first consumers get their hands on it. So it's very cool to see them taking an initiative and putting that code out there so the community can get their hands on it and really start working with it. And with this new version of Android, it turns out they're moving from the YAFFS, yet another flash file system, 
to ext4 for their file systems. Now the phone manufacturers will still have the option to use that YAFFS file system or they can move to ext4. The Nexus S, for example, will be using ext4, and it's entirely possible that some applications will have to be changed just a bit to work better with the ext4 system, but hopefully this will be a performance improvement in the long run. And finally, if you haven't seen it yet, with Gingerbread, with the new version of Android, there is an entirely new keyboard. Not a huge difference, but there is a lot of extra space between the keys now that makes things a little bit easier to use. Well, the wonderful people over at XDA Forums, which is a place where you can learn about rooting your phone or adding new software to your phone, they have managed to create an APK file containing the Gingerbread keyboard that can be used on Android 2.2 or 2.1. This doesn't require rooting your device, it doesn't require changing anything, just loading up a new application like you would sideload any other application to your phone or your tablet or whatever else you're using. So if you'd like to check that out or any of the other stories I've talked about, check the source code below for all of the links. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great weekend. Make sure to check out the other two videos I put out this week if you haven't already. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.